So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Angela Mizika, and we'll be reporting out on RPIW number 16. I work with the Kaizen Promotion Office in the Cypress Health Region, and I've had the opportunity to be the team lead for this project. Here is the standard work combination sheet for this afternoon's presentation. The team will be presenting to a tack time of 20 minutes. Here is a picture of our team. Each of our team members will, present, will introduce themselves as they present. This is the project form for RPIW number 16, Multidisciplinary Rounds. The theme for this project is to create standard work for multidisciplinary rounds to facilitate and communicate an action plan for discharge. The current process flow is the team prepares for multidisciplinary rounds, the bedside nurse discusses the patient at MDR, and the RN then informs the patient of their discharge date. The current situation the team was presented with included the following information about multidisciplinary rounds. The round takes approximately 45 minutes, it's focused on care planning for each patient, which does not necessarily include a discharge plan. The targeted discharge dates that are assigned to patients based on past work done with the D system are not being shared with the patients, and patients are not being included in their discharge planning process. There have been several past RPAWs completed that address some components of targeted date of discharge. Here is our target, dis our target progress report. A few areas that I'd like to emphasize are the walking distance of the nurses. The distance measured was the, the amount of um, distance the nurses traveled from the respective nursing station into the multidisciplinary room and back to their nursing station after their report. The next is the lead time. The first lead time of 50 minutes is the measured amount, is the measured amount of time it takes to complete the multidisciplinary rounds. The second lead time of nearly 180 hours or seven and a half days is the time it takes from the patient being discussed at MDR until the discharge time is communicated back to the patient. Two of the defects that are being tracked for quality metrics are the number of whiteboards without discharge dates, as well as the number of patients that do not have a discharge action plan after multidisciplinary rounds. Good afternoon. My name is Brenda Jamieson, and I'm with the Medicine KOT and subteam lead for this RPIW. So first, we reviewed our current state. We observed multidisciplinary rounds multiple times on 3D. They're held in the charting room. One nurse and one LPN make up the team for between seven and 10 patients, depending on the capacity on the unit. There are four teams in total. Most of the participants in multidisciplinary rounds are made up of sometimes physical therapy, sometimes occupational therapy. Charge nurse is always there. The team nurse, physicians as they are available. And we identified Kaizen opportunities. Some of the Kaizen opportunities that were identified was definitely a creation of standard work for multidisciplinary rounds because we found there was a lack of standard work in place but most importantly was to improve, improve the communication between our teams and our patients. We identified our non-value at a time as almost 98% and our value at a time was 2.3%. And then to our future state. I would be delinquent if I didn't say how happy we were at where our team got to. They went way beyond our ideas for a future state, proposing what we could only have hoped for. They suggested improved communications for our patients would only be achieved by bedside multidisciplinary rounds. The information was streamlined by bringing workstation on wheels to the patient's bedside. We established real-time updates to Sun Sunrise Clinical Manager by outlining an action plan to discharge and real-time updates to the patient's whiteboards. This resulted in value add to our patients of 99.7%. Our attack time was measured based on one multi multidisciplinary round per day. We allowed 40 minutes of time for the rounds, 10 minutes per team, and this was based on previous work practice. Our average daily census was 32.65 patients per day. 
So one patient had to be discussed every one minute 14 seconds, which gave us a talk time of 74 seconds. And one of the most important parts of our RPIW week were the quotations from our patient advocates. They started at the beginning of the week. Don't we all want to see our patients be happy, healthy, and to go home? We should all be together, and it's everyone's job. I'm Cindy Grimard. I'm a social worker on 3D, and I'm a participant in this RPIW. Uh, the Kaizen I was involved in was Kaizen 1 multidisciplinary rounds. Here is how MDR looked pre-Kaizen with the discipline sitting behind closed doors discussing the patients. This is a spaghetti diagram showing the flow of the bedside nurses coming to a central location for MDR. This is the time observation form showing how we tracked each pace patient in multidisciplinary rounds. The standard work combination sheet shows that it took 75 seconds pre-Kaizen to discuss each patient. The percent load chart further illustrates the amount of time spent on each patient in MDR. One of the ID summer idea summary sheet shows the poor communication between care providers and patients pre-Kaizen. Through communication and use of the whiteboard, the patients are now informed. Hello, my name is Lacey Renault. I'm the clinical resource nurse on 3D and a participant in this RPIW. This idea summary sheet indicates a problem with flow of information and where it's tracked. The idea was to use the patient whiteboards to track the information discussed during rounds Therefore, we would have consistent communication and less paperwork. Eleven pieces of standard work were created during this RPIW. An example of the standard work is the creation of a script for the team to follow. It allows concrete, effective information to flow while encouraging interaction, um, interactive dialogue between all the members of the team and the patient. The three key components of the script are clinical, so medical treatments and diagnostics, functional such as mobility and social such as home issues. Uh, this is a photo of the patient whiteboards. As you can see, it concisely communicates an action plan to everyone involved. The multi-skills training list shows how we are going to roll this out. At the top is the standard work we are going to teach the nurses. Rollout will start next week and a target completion date of July 15th. I'm Ron Taylor, I'm a hospitalist and part of the team. Uh, these diagrams represent the post-Kaizen um, data. And so the first one is a spaghetti diagram and I, it's uh, obviously a longer route for the multidisciplinary team to travel to the bedside for the patient, but we definitely think that that extra time and journey is more than offset by the value that you get from having a, a care plan developed at the bedside with all the team members there that also focuses on discharge planning and target date of discharge and then it's shared with the team members, the family, and uh, the patient. So the value gain is exceeded by the distance. The next three slides combined more or less the time observation form, the standard work uh, combination form, and the percent load chart all show that during our experience, the amount of time per uh, patient went up, but there's important uh, points and subtleties to observe in this. And the first one is we were problem solving on the go as we went around the floor, and so that's gonna increase the time, and, particular items like infection control had to be sorted out. Um, and a couple observations that I want to make was um, on the time observation form, uh, the nurse team there, team four, was the only group to do it two days in a row. And that form shows that it took about 124 seconds per patient. And the next form shows the same team the day before at 140 seconds a patient. So in one day, you're already seeing a decreased time with learning and efficiencies. And then finally, that uh, percent load chart um, shows that on the last day after we had done it again, we did a simulation, a mock uh, sort of uh, bedside rounds, and we were down at 85 seconds per patient, which is quite close to the pre-Kaizen number. So we think we can get it exactly the same with more value at the very least. And then the last couple slides, one shows the model of bedside rounds, multidisciplinary rounds, and then uh, comments from patients that we picked up and some nursing staff after we did it. 
Good afternoon. I'm Marlene Smedu. I'm the Vice President of Quality and Transformation, and I was a participant on this team. And I'm going to begin the report on our second Kaizen, which was communication with patients and their families. So in order to understand who our patients were or are on 3D, we acquired PQA data regarding medicine patients in the Regina Coppell Health region as a whole and learned that about 71% of those patients are discharged to their own homes. We also acquired PQA data on, uh, specifically on 3D and learned that the average length of stay was almost eight and a half days and there were five diagnoses that accounted for the majority of patient admissions. So that gave us an idea of our patient population. We know that patients and their families need to be more engaged in their care plan and their progress in order to be well prepared to go home and to be self-sufficient when they get there. And we had an idea sheet regarding uh, what that work might be to uh, incorporate that. So we stole shamelessly from the ticket home designed on the short stay unit at Pasco Hospital and we created a similar poster for 3D entitled, Are You Ready to Go Home? And the intention is that there will be a poster at each patient's bedside. The specific criteria and explanations were developed for 3D in conjunction with one of the younger patients on the unit who had been hospitalized 17 times and had very clear direction for us about what the, the uh, words should be and what we should be looking for to prepare people like her to go home. Good afternoon. Uh, I am Sharon Myers, patient advisor as well as uh, participant in this week's RPIW. We also developed standard work for the nurses to support the patients and families to use the poster at the bedside every day. We developed a patient family brochure to explain both the multidisciplinary rounds at the bedside and the Are You Ready to Go Home poster. On the back of the brochure is a place for patients and families to record questions or any concerns they may have for future discussion. We consulted with Brent Kitchen, the privacy officer, to ensure that the information provided to patients and families supported both their engagement in their own care at the bedside round and the protection of their privacy. We had positive reactions to the poster from both patients and nurses. One patient said, brilliant. And a nurse said, the poster is good to engage patient and family in discharge planning. Good afternoon, I'm Larry Myers, and I'm a patient advisor. In the Kaizen program, we were looking after the 5S evaluation of a dirty service room on 3C. Should have a picture. This, this is what the room looked like kind of when we started. And uh, A, the poor girl couldn't even get to the sink to start to clean things up in the first place. Also, it was a dirty room, but we had clean things in there, sterile things that were we concerned about cross-contamination and oxygen tanks that weren't fastened to a wall. And this I just described as chaos. And after we did our work, and oh, I know, back up. We, we changed that. When we did the uh, measurement, it was 0 0.068. When we finished, we were at 2.0. And our room looked like this. The, uh, the gowns, which are, are clear, the girl has a place to work. In the first one, she folded a whole bunch of bags because that's when she was hired, that's what she was told to do. The bags are now in this unit. You pull it down and you go. 
she saves all the time of folding those bags. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Derek Larson. I'm the Executive Director of Research and Health Information Services, and I'm a participant on this RPIW. Uh, first thing I'm going to speak to is our uh, waste wheel. And we went out on the Gemba for an hour or so, and each team member wrote down what they saw on the waste wheel, and we, we did that for a bit, and we had um, over 30 uh, things that we noticed. Most of them clustered around inventory. Um, this isn't any different from any other unit. Gloves, 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 gloves everywhere. Um, and those are things we can cut back on. And some other things were some of the defects that we noticed, such as the whiteboards weren't being used uh, as they were set up. Um, post uh, Kaizen, this is our waste wheel, and uh, we got rid of quite a few of them. We're just under about 20 items left. These will be handed off to the team on 3D to try to attend to them at a later date. This is our stick tally, uh, looking at our defects. So this is what we use to actually measure um, our defects. And the next uh, graph is going to show you our defects that we had. Just a, a, a cautionary word here, we didn't start measuring all the defects at the same time, it was staggered a bit, so we don't have all the data at the front end. What we did look at was the percentage of whiteboards that did not have a targeted date of discharge on them. We also looked at the discharge status or plan that was not discussed during multidisciplinary rounds. We also had uh, families stating that they were not involved with discharge planning. And finally, that uh, the patient status was not discussed, even at the multidisciplinary round. So most of these were close or near to 100% defect when we started this. And at the end, with our post-Kaizen, we reached zero for two of them. Um, one, uh, we were only at 11% with the whiteboards without a targeted date of discharge. And the green one is the indication that the family states that they have not been involved with discharge planning. Why we feel this happened was because we weren't really ironing out all the crinkles in our multidisciplinary rounds at the bedside, and sometimes the patients felt that they were being talked over instead of included in the discussions. This is our newspaper. We have three items that are left over here. The first one that we need to do is really just decide on how big this poster that we're going to use for the patient's ticket to home is going to be. Um, there's a cost to this, so we want to be cognizant of that. We also need to provide some standard work on patient information for those patients on 3D. And finally, um, there's isolation rooms that are on this unit, and we found when we started doing the rounds in the bedside that we have to have different standard work when we're actually going into isolation rooms, so we need to figure that out too. This is our target progress report and results sheet. And the areas that we covered here that were mentioned at the beginning um, was one was the team nurse, the walking distance. We had indicated the baseline was 40, our target was 20, and we actually got it to 337. So that's an increase of 750%. The reason is we're taking it out of one room and we're having them walk to the patient's room. So we expected that to go up. The lead time was about 50 minutes. Um, and when we practiced this out and timed it for the multidisciplinary rounds at the bedside, it was about an hour. We still believe we can cut that down a bit because we only did it a couple of times. And this is the interesting one. From the time that the multidisciplinary round decided to target a date of discharge to the time that the patient was aware of it was about 180 hours. That's seven and a half days. If you recall, we said that the average length of stay is eight and a half days. So patients were only hearing about when they were going to be discharged basically the day before they had to go which is what we wanted to improve, and we did. We brought that down to two minutes. The next one is the whiteboards, um, and we are looking at uh, how many had uh, discharge date on it, and we brought that down to 11% from 96. And finally, uh, actions identified. Uh, it was 100%. We didn't have actions attached to it, and we brought that down to 0%. Good afternoon, my name is Melissa Dachko and I'm a nurse on Unit 3D here and I was involved as a participant this week. I'm um, just going to quickly summarize the workshop that we had during this very energetic week. Um, we created standard work around multidisciplinary rounds based on all the disciplines involved. Five desks, the dirty service room, created the Are You Ready to Go Home poster for the bedsides, created a pamphlet to provide patients and their families on admissions about what was to take place redesigned the whiteboards to be more patient and family friendly. And overall, we increased communication with patients and families. 
So we just have a few people that we'd, well, a lot of people that we'd like to thank. I'll mention um, just some key ones. Don Calder and Sue Neville, our sponsors. Linda McPhee, our process owner. Laurie Hopfoff and Colin Hartness. Um, physician staff and patients on 3D for their patients and our patient advocates. Thanks for your attention.